I think this topic is a classic example of people basing their conclusions off reading abstracts and sentences picked out from researchers' discussion points. People are raving about the herbal supplement Tonkat Ali, from internet personalities to established researchers like Dr. Andrew Huberman. They're all saying it increases testosterone, but after actually reading the studies, are they missing the mark? Let's find out. I'd like for you to hear what Dr. Huberman has to say on the topic before we dive into a bit of the literature. But there's a category of supplements that are very interesting that for most people who aren't exploring testosterone augmentation for sport, work very well to increase testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. Not, you know, 300, you know, not a tripling or anything like that. And the main ones are two substances. One is called Tongat Ali. Oh, yeah, which is, that stuff's real, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because the, what happens is the testosterone molecule, it, it's basically carried in a cargo. So it can be in its free form, unbound form, free testosterone. And everyone says, oh, I want more free testosterone. You want more, but the, these what are called sex hormone binding globulins, so there's something called sex hormone bonding globulin and albumin. They carry the testosterone molecule to the different tissues of the body. So you don't want all your testosterone free. You want some of it bound up so that it can be delivered to the different tissues, including your brain. But if you have too much sex hormone bonding globulin, the testosterone can't really do its things. Okay. So Tonga Ali, about 400 milligrams per day, has the effect of raising free testosterone and overall testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. Okay, Dr. Huberman mentioned some of the physiology with SHBG and free testosterone. That's all fine, and I'm not here to get into the weeds of physiology anyway. What I'm interested in is his claim that Tonkat Ali increases testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. If we look at just a few studies that exist at this point, I'm highly skeptical that statement is actually true. Here's why. One study gave Tonkat Ali to men that were insufficiently producing testosterone, meaning that they were hypogonadal for three months and found that their total testosterone increased by about 12%, which equates to about 25 points. But maybe he's referring to a different set of studies like these two. Uh, this one gave Tonkat Ali to young men that didn't have testosterone issues and they experienced only a 15% increase in total testosterone. And that was at a dose higher than what Dr. Huberman mentioned. Or this second study that supplemented for six months and did find a relatable increase, a 43% increase, which equates in an absolute sense to about a 100 point increase. But here's the kicker, when compared against a group of men that exercised basic weightlifting, there was no testosterone advantage. Or finally, this industry funded study, surely they'd show huge increases in testosterone because well, you know, bias through funding and all that jazz. But no, they found Tonkat Ali was completely ineffective after supplementing for three months. But you know what? Let's stop with these individual studies. What if we looked at a meta-analysis, an analysis of many studies put together to achieve a conclusion? Well, we're in luck because there is a small one that was performed by a group of researchers. They only had five studies to base their analysis on, but they came to some pretty intriguing conclusions. What's nice about this analysis is that they separated the hypogonadal studies, so the ones including men that were producing less than the normal level of testosterone, and the studies performed with healthy men. So if we look at the hypogonadal men, we can see two studies with two different conditions. So I won't bore you with the specifics on what each square and all that jazz means. I'll leave that for my detailed study analysis, but if we look at the total effect, the orange diamond, it swings pretty strongly toward the right, which means that Tonkat Ali likely increases testosterone in hypogonadal men. If we look at the three remaining studies in healthy men, the average result seems to also tilt towards an effect, although the effect is less robust. Okay, so why am I complaining about Dr. Huberman's and many other internet personalities' perspective that it increases testosterone? 
it seems the evidence points to yes. Well, first off, the meta-analysis graphs do not indicate the magnitude of the effect. So you should ask yourself, since there's an effect, how much of an effect? Two, five, 500, five million? Well, the second meta-analyses come with bias assessments. Essentially, the researchers evaluate, based on set criteria, the level of potential bias in each study analyzed. Most of the studies are relatively low bias, which would lend itself well to the pro-testosterone point. But this Chan study is a notable one because it's heavily weighted, meaning it sways the average results significantly. And yet, it has multiple points of potential bias. So if we open our graph back up and we temporarily remove the Chan study, we'd likely see no effect of Tonkat Ali on testosterone. Third, all of these studies are studies that I covered earlier, and the effects were pretty mild. But even including the studies that showed some more substantial results, other treatments like exercise seem to be just as effective. Finally, number four, although I could go on, trust me, uh, none of these reports are on free testosterone, which even Dr. Huberman mentions that we need to also look at free testosterone. And if we dive back into the individual studies, the largest increase in free testosterone was 34%, which sounds like a lot, and it is, but it was the Chan study that had several potential biases. The other studies that report free testosterone either show no effect or a modest 16% increase. If it's the latter, it's not too shabby, but nothing as earth shattering as many would have you believe. Now, to everyone's credit, most people aren't saying this herbal supplement is about to replace testosterone replacement therapy or anything, but I take it a step further. It isn't even close. Might it increase testosterone? Sure, but don't expect it to be tremendous, probably a slightly greater effect for hypogonadal men. And if you exercise, forget about it. I release my full analysis where I break this down even further, which I'll link to this content for you, or you can check out my other similar content. And with that, I hope to have the pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Bye.